how we can create a new process or how we can uh, uh, create a process from the program and how we'll execute it and at last how we can uh, go to kill it or how that will be exit from the system. So one thing all of you uh, should understand that whenever we keep the program into the main memory, it means that that program is no longer called program, it is called process. And this particular process is, is in the main memory for the execution. And the resources means either the IO resources or the CPU resources will is going to be allocated for a process. So about that we'll, we'll see in today's class. So here it says that how a process will be created or how this process creation take place. So it says that the parent process create child process. So if we have a parent process in the Unix architecture, this is the phenomena that will be useful. Where there is a parent process and through the parent process, child process will be created. And from that particular child process, another child process will be created. And from that child process, another child process will be created. In that way, the process is going to be created. Which in turn create other processes forming a tree of processes. So we'll see shortly, what do you mean by a process tree and how it looked like? Generally process identified and managed via the process identifier. See, whenever we create a new process, uh, Un, uh, un uh, uh, allocated or which is not allocated uh, ID will be allocated to the new process. So if we have a process, it doesn't mean that there will be a sequence of uh, process ID will be given. So whatever process ID which is unallocated, the operating system will find out that process ID and allocate to the new process. Resource sharing option will be there when we create it, like parent and child share all resources, means whatever the resources will be shared by the parent, the same resources will be shared by the children. Children share subset of the parent resources. So it says that that subset of the parent resources could be there with the children. Parent and children share no resources. So these are the three scenario. Uh, between parent and the child means if we are using the fox system call to create a new uh, process which is just a duplication of that particular process so both the parent parent and child will share the same resources let's say if we haven't used the fox system call so there is the possibility that parent and children share no resources and if there is a fox system call and that particular children is uh, going to execute some separate uh, instructions so definitely the children will have some subset of the parent but new resources will be allocated to the children also so there are three type of scenario in resource sharing options between two processes there are some execution options like parent and children execute concurrently. So they will execute at the same time or uh, you can say that uh, both will execute parallelly or parent wait until child terminate. This is also a scenario. It says that the parent will wait until child is going to child terminate. So in yesterday's example, what we have uh, gone through is, uh, let's see that example. So in that particular example, uh, a parent, pay, uh, parent process is there, uh, which is calling the fox system call. And because of this fox system call, another child process is being created. 
Now in this scenario, what will happen is all the resources which is there with the uh, with the parent uh, shell will be allocated to the child shell. Okay, the same resources, and this parent shell will wait in the secondary memory till the child process will execute itself and uh, will be removed from the main memory. And after that, the exit, exit system call is there by which the parent process again come into the existence, means it will again come into the main memory and execute its code. So it's, this command will give me all the processes that are running in my system. So once I'll execute this, See, these are all processes that are executing in my system. Okay. And you see, this is the PID, which is process ID. Okay. The process ID one has been allotted a particular process, which is a launch D. This is a unique type of process which will be loaded into the ram when your system boots up so this is the first process that has been created in mac os okay it is not the scenario in other os I, i'll let you know the process tree for the unix os so you see uh, we have a process which is not being generated through the fog this is the process which will be uh, created by the operating system. After this process, there are many other processes that can be forked with this particular process. So this is the process which is, you can say, genesis or the first process or the very, uh, 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 you can say that uh, this is the beginning of the process that so in that way, now what will happen is a different uh, processor has been uh, created. Now here, if you'll see, uh, we have the PID, which is listed here. This is our process ID. And uh, there are some, uh, some processes which is running on. So there are some system, uh, some process called uh, system state. And uh, the category of this process is daemon, okay? Later on, I'll tell you what do you mean by daemon, uh, daemon process. And there are a concept of zombie process. So about that also we'll see. And uh, you see there are different type of uh, processes that are running. Some processes are, these are all processes which are operating system driven see system library user bin so there is a kernel event there's a bluetooth which is running right now right so there are different processes which are uh, running uh, right now in the system and uh, you can see just now i have created the process I have called this particular process, right? PS underscore uh, PS uh, and then hyphen AX. For this also, the operating system has uh, given a PID. So here, uh, that particular, uh, you can say super parent, right? You, that will be idle to say. The super parent will be created by the uh, operating system at the time of booting. And that super uh, process is going to create some more processes as a child process, and then it will execute the whole thing in your uh, operating system. And uh, these are some uh, uh, show sharing options and execution options that we have uh, gone through. Let's see how uh, the process will be created. I'll show you the program also that how we, we can create the process. But this is how, uh, this is the just a, a pictorial representation how a process will be created. So uh, there is an address space uh, where we have a child duplicate of parent. So we have a child which is uh, duplicating the parent using the fog system call and child has a program loaded into it. 
and the program that we want to execute further will be there in the child. So as uh, we have discussed in yesterday's class, like uh, there is a, a child process. So there is a shell, which is the part of the application program. Here we have OS or kernel. And at last we have hardwares. Now this shell is calling the Fox system call. This Fox system call is going to make exact replica of this process. So here we have, this is a parent process. And this is a child process that has been created by the Fox system call. And this Fox system call will return the PID of the child here, okay? And this particular shell this is a child shell, right? Or the child, uh, and uh, for this also, the fork is going to give, uh, uh, return some value, which is, called, which is a zero value. And here only the EXCC system call will be called in the child process for, make, for calling other processes. Let's say we are calling browser so it is going to call. So once we'll do that, that particular shell, because EXCC, uh, ex when it, they execute, it will uh, remove its own uh, process from where the EXC has been called. So it has been removed and it will load the new process what it is going to execute. The EXC is going to execute. And once this browser is going to uh, execute its process and uh, it will be closed, then there is a exit and this particular exit will load the shell again from the secondary memory to the main memory. So once this Fox system call will be called, the parent will get the um, child ID and the parent will go to the secondary memory. In the main memory, child process will come. Child process will uh, call the browser, another process. Because of that, child process will be gone and browser will be loaded into the main memory. Once browser will be done, and it will be executing and it will be closing and through the exit system call, the parent process is again will be called. So here what will happen is the parent will execute uh, once the child process will done its execution, okay? So this is the uh, phenomena of uh, this process creation. Now here we have a Fox system call will create a new process. So you can see in the Fox system call, um, the parent, uh, parent, what parent process will do, the parent process uh, is going to be in a waiting state. And there is a child uh, process because Fox system call will create a child process. This particular child process will using the EXCC uh, system call to call a new process after that, once the exit system call will be called, it will be uh, going, to, uh, uh, going to find out the parent and the parent will be resumed because of this exit system, uh, exit system call. And this is how the parent will be called again. And after that, this parent will execute other fault to, to execute or to launch other processes into the main memory. So this cycle will go on uh, because the 
as i told you the initial uh, parent process was, was there which is never going to exit so there is a scenario where we have uh, the parent and then there is a child and then there is another child then this child has another child then this child has another child in that way this process is going on if let's say this is uh, done its execution it will call its parent this parent has done its execution then it will call its parent but this parent is never going to uh, close because this if this parent will be closed your operating system is not going to work so this parents will exist to create some other childs later on if it is required getting it so uh, this is the uh, way that has been uh, done uh, in the operating system so generally what do you mean by that how the process will be created the process will be created by cloning okay so cloning means you by using the fox system call we are creating another process which is called child process so you see what do you mean by cloning the child process is an exact replica of the parent the fox system call is responsible for that so if we have a process p1 then this p1 has executed the fox system call so obviously this is the system call so it will run in a kernel so this kernel will is going to create another process which is a child process so we have two processes right now p1 and p2 both have same resources both are replica to each other but there is uh, the concept of parent and there is a culture concept of child uh, let's go to this particular program uh, where we will see that how a child process will be created or how the process will be created using uh, the method called cloning now in this particular program uh, we have a variable p p equal to fork uh, we have uh, done first now when we use fork this fork is going to create a new process all uh, all along we'll get a new process separately so i'm i'm writing something here so we have let's say uh, the process uh, the parent process you can say the parent is there this partic particular parent process is is there this is the parent process and uh, once it it will uh, executing fork it is creating a separate new child process right now after that what will happen this fork is going to give because the parent process is there the whole whole program is the parent process and the whole program are the child process now what will happen at first the parent process uh, process will be getting the value of p so what p will will be getting to uh, uh, parent process this is the child id so let's say the child id is uh, 23 which is allocated to p of the parent done now what happened because we are running this particular program and generally what we have seen is whenever we have a parent process and the child process that has been created using the fork both is going to execute parallelly in that way what will happen is uh, the parent process will get the id of the child because fork will give you the child process id to the parent and the fork will give you the id as zero to the child so both will be returning I means child process and the parent process both are getting the id but here child child process will get zero parent process will get 23 but because this is a separate process they have their own id right let's say the parent has the id let's say 10 and the child has the id let's say 23 that's why the child id has been given to the parent as this particular fox system call. up to this it is clear i think now what will happen now it will go to inside the program once it will go to the inside the program you see if 
P is greater than zero, it means this is going to satisfy. So the parent process will execute this particular part. And because it is P equal to equal to zero, it means the P value is zero allocated to the child. So child process will execute this particular part. Getting it? Now, what happened here is when parent will executing this particular process, so it will print child PID and there is the system called call wait. Now what will happen? The parent process will go to the wait state. Just we have seen this, right? It will go to the wait state. Now parent process will wait till, till exit will be called. Now the same time the child process is also going also executing but it is not executing this part because it is not satisfied now it is going to execute this part because this part is satisfied by this particular value which is given to the child process and uh, in child process this particular is going to print and there will be exit once this exit will be occur you see here in the diagram what will happen is once the exit will be occur it will call the wait and it will resume the parent process. Now after that, that parent process will be resumed. Getting it? This is how this will be done. In this particular program, we haven't used access system call. This we haven't used. In other example, we'll, we have used it. We'll see it later on. I think this particular part you understood. Yes. Okay, this particular part is clear to all of you. Then we'll see that how, if we'll use the Fox system call, then how it is, what it is happening and how it is working internally. We are trying to understand that. Now, what happened when we are using Fox system call? The Fox system call is, uh, is created by, is used by the kernel. Now, you know that there are kernel stacks. And inside the kernel stack, we have some values which are, which are there. And this particular kernel will create exact replica of that value in the kernel stack. So in the kernel stack of, let's say this is, uh, this is the color for the parent process and this is the, the orange color is for the child process. The parent process has the information. Yesterday we have seen page table will be there. PCB is there and kernel stack is there. Okay. Now this is related to each process. This kernel state stack is in the kernel part and this page table and PCB would be the part of the uh, process and it will be in a user space. Now the exact replica because all the resources will be copied. So all the resources will be copied here. Heading it. Now we have the page table here. Also we have the page table here. We have the kernel stack here. Also we have the kernel stack here. We'll have the PCB here. Also we have the PCB. But in the PCB, there are slight difference. Now the PCB of the parent, what is there is containing PID, state, parent, file, open file, pointers to the page table, pointers to the page table, right? So which is pointing to this particular page table, this particular page table. And there is a kernel stack which is pointing, uh, there's a uh, kernel stack pointer which is pointing to this kernel stack. There is a uh, trap frame which is also in part of the kernel stack which is there. There's a context means all the other entity of the process control block. Now what happened to the new process? If you see the new, new process, so the new process PID is different. Why? Because operating system will give the new PID to the new children, obviously. And, the, and they will set the state to the new state. So whatever the state of the parent is, we doesn't bother. We give a new state to the child because child has just created. So we'll give it to new. New means it is in the secondary memory, not in the main memory. Now after that, set pointer is newly formed. What are the set pointer? Page table means the pointer which is pointing to the page table. So now this particular is pointing to the parent page table. It has to be formulated again because 
there is a child process and it has its own page table so it will point to that particular page table now there is a kernel stack and inside that there is a trap frame and the context which are there now after that copy information like file open size uh, what is the current directory is and uh, from the parent so this particular part will be copied whatever is there in the parent will be copied here okay and this particular part will be newly given to the pcb so we say it is a exact replica of it even though we have some new thing that will be allocated to the child process okay now after that what will happen once we'll do it and once we'll create the state to the new after that the operating system will change its state to the ready state it means the child process will reach to the main memory because it is in the ready state so from the new state the child will go to the ready state so a new state indicated that pid has been taken the process is being created but not ready to run but when we say the state is the ready state the ready state means the process is in the ready queue and ready to run and after that this particular child process could be picked so let's say we have a ready queue here and this is my child process and there are different other processes which are running and this is the scheduler this is called cpu scheduler this particular cpu scheduler will pick up this particular child and this child will go to the cpu so we don't know when this child process will be picked up by the cpu that is not in our hand this is the whole soul uh, uh responsibility of the operating system that how we have created the cpu schedule and operating system will work on that particular scheduling algorithms that we'll see shortly okay now let's see as i told you the resources will be uh, will be uh, allocated so how the resources will be allocated so once uh, this page table will be copied to the page table to the child definitely all the entries which are in the page table of the parent will be given to the page table of the child so definitely if parent is pointing to the page uh, to the uh, ram means uh, in the page table what we have is a mapping between virtual um, uh, address space to the physical address space it means block number to the uh, page frame number right so this is my frame and uh, for the child process also the same frame will be allocated and for the parent process also the same frame will be allocated means child and parent both the process will be allocated same frames getting it see here this is the parent process which is uh, the line is uh, this uh, green line mm, and the child process the line is here we have uh, orange line so both is pointing to the same Uh, page frame so you see here the resources will be allocated in the previously to the same space what your parent is pointing to so we have this is the parent process this is the parent process virtual uh, memory space or virtual address space and this is a child process uh virtual address space if you see both will be given the same uh on this uh, uh process page table so both are same you see the block number of one will be allocated to frame 6 here also block number of one of child will be go to frame a uh, page number page frame 6 here block 2 will be allocated page frame 13 here also block 2 will be allocated to page frame 13 in that way it will be done and because uh, we are talking about the kernel and the kernel part will be the same for these two so the same will be allocated to the kernel part also here we are going to understand the concept of for and uh, this particular for for only fox system call okay so the fox system call is used to create a new process which is called child process which run concurrently 
with the process that make the fox call means it says that the fox system call uh, because both are running concurrently and when the parent process got away it has to wait in the um, waiting state otherwise both will be executing concurrently okay because of wait it is waiting in the secondary otherwise both will going to execute concurrent after a new child process is created both process will execute the next instruction following the fork uh, system call a child process uses the same program counter same cpu register same open file and use the parent process it take no parameter and return an integer value below are the differences between them now there are some value that is been returning if the fork is returning negative value it means that creation of the child process was unsuccessful if fork is returning zero it means that the newly child has been created if fork will return the positive value it means that it is returning this to the parent and it will tell that the parent pro the this is the process id of the newly created child so you see zero will be given to child some value will be given to parent okay let's see this particular example so this is a c program here we use the fox system call first and then there is a printf now once we'll do that what will happen is this fox system call will create the two process one is the parent process which is running another process which is a child process is will be created now both will be executing at the same time so we have this hello world is going to print two times right so when we execute this you see uh the output is hello world two time okay because one hello world will be done by the parent process one hello world will be done by the child process now let's see this example in this example we have three fork one fork will create one child another fork will is going to create another child of the child that is created another child of the parent that is created another fork is going to create more number of childs and then there is a hello and it's is asking that how many time hello is going to execute okay so in this particular program how many fork are there this is the first fork this is the second fork and this is the third fork after that we have printf and this hello hello is going to be printing right right now let's see what is happening this is inside main now let's see what happened into that now you you just assume that p is your parent process right now this is your parent process now once the parent process will get fork this is going to create a child that is child 1 and the parent process which exists now this this uh, again if we'll get fork what will happen is this child process will create its own child again and this parent process is going to create its own path its own child and this parent process which exists itself now after the third fork this particular child process okay uh, here also this particular child process in the second fork this particular child process is creating another child and its own child its own process is already there right 
Now, this particular fork is, if he's going to execute the third fork, now this particular child is going to create another child. And because this is the parent process of that, that exists. Now this particular child process is creating another child and this already exists. This particular child process is going to create another child and this process itself exists. This parent process is going to create another child and this parent already exists. So you see how many child has been created. So here you can see seven child will be created and one parent process is already there. Getting it? So how many times did hello is going to execute? Definitely one child process will execute hello one time, one time, one time, one time in that way. Seven times hello process will be executed by the child and one time uh, this hello is going to print by the parent process. So let's go to the this, uh, uh, go to the output. So this is the output of it. So how many times? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you see eight time hello will be printing. As I told you, seven child and one parent, right? So this is how it will be created. So how you will, you will understand that how many times this hello is going to execute? It is going to execute two to the power of n time. Where n is the number of folk has been called. So we have called three time number of four, so that n will be three. Two to the power of three means eight time that hello is going to call. Another question could be asked that how many times the children process or how many children process will be created? So the answer is two to the power of n minus one. It means eight minus one. The seven child process will be created. Okay. Okay, let's go to this example and try to understand what is this. So we have a, a separate function which is saying for example. And inside that we have a system called for which is saying equal to equal to zero. And it say hello from child else hello from parent. In the main, this particular function has been called. Now what will happen in this particular program? In the main, this function will be called. So control will come here in the function. In the function, the first statement is if fork. So once we'll get fork, this fork is going to execute. It will create two processes. One process is a child process. Another process is a parent process. So child process will be given zero and parent process will be given PID of the child. So here you can see because we are saying equal to equal to zero means definitely the fork is going to return zero to the child process. So the child is going to execute. Getting it? And the hello from the parent is going to execute afterwards. So what is the output for that? So hello from child and then hello from parent or hello from parent, hello from child. In this particular example, it says that either parent process will execute first or child process will execute first because there is no wait, there is no exit, right? So in this particular example, we can say that both child and parent is executing parallelly. So it is very difficult to find it out which particular will be the output. Let's execute it. So here it is the, the execution. It says that first parent process is, is executing and then child process will execute. If I'll execute again, maybe the output may be different. So child process and the parent process because both are executing parallelly. See again, the parent is executing and child is after that. So this is the scenario when we are executing uh, the parent and the child concurrently. So we don't know what will be the output. 